Here's your word for the day from Calvary in Lake Havasu. Visit us on the web at calvaryaz.com. Hey, I'm Pastor Sean. I work with the students here at Calvary. And today I have the honor of bringing you the thousandth word for the day. Uh, Hey, I have a question for you. Are you a law-abiding citizen? Now, I'm not asking do you speed sometimes or do you put the recycling in the normal trash can? Uh, I'm asking because in order to live in a community of people, there are certain laws and rules that we have to live by. These things keep us together by making sure no one oversteps their boundaries or lords their power over one another. So laws in and of themselves are not evil or restricting. They're simply our interpretation of what it takes to be together and be at peace with one another. Now, if you didn't know this, God has a set of laws that he calls his community of people to live by as well. And back in the day, there was a certain group of people called the Pharisees, and their job was to keep and interpret the law of God so God's people could live at peace and community with him. For good reason, the Pharisees had a bad reputation to be sticklers about the law. And honestly, the way they treated Jesus, who ironically was God in the flesh, was pretty terrible. But I imagine they were just trying to take their job serious, only because they know God's character. God is so many things. He is holy and perfect. He is peace, but he's a special kind of peace. He's shalom. And maybe you heard people say shalom before, but it means a kind of peace that everything is as it should be. There's order from chaos, and God is order. He fixes the broken things and brings meaning from the messes, but God is also anger and wrath. And so this holy and perfect God who's given us commands to follow in order to keep the peace, does not take it lightly when we break these commands, when we disobey the laws that he puts in place. So you can imagine the kind of pressure that the Pharisees must have felt to keep the law of God. Now, I know this has been a big buildup, but today's passage is so special. I want you to know that if you were to understand and obey these two commands of God, You'd be able to keep every single other command and law God has ever given and will ever give uh, in, in order for us to live at community and be at peace with him. So check this, this command that he gives us out in Matthew 22, verses 34 through 40. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they'd gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And Jesus said this, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Jesus very clearly tells us that if we learn to love God with every fiber of our being, then we have every opportunity to be in relationship with the one and only, all-powerful, holy, perfect, amazing God. Something the Pharisees didn't understand was that God requires relationship built on love to fuel obedience to his law. So, how do we love God? Well, the first is with all of our hearts. Our hearts unchecked are evil and desire nothing but evil because they are flesh and corrupted, corrupted by sin. But if you trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior, he gives you a new heart, one that desires to please God instead of please ourselves. The next way we love God is with all of our soul. Our hearts may be flesh and they're wasting away, but our souls are eternal. Before we knew Jesus, our souls were on a one-way ticket to an eternity in hell. But thank God again that Jesus comes in and makes a way for those who believe in him. His dying on the cross and shedding of his blood washes away all the sin and corruption that's on our souls, and it washes it to be as pure as the the whitest snow. So, So we can live in step with God's Spirit, producing the spiritual fruit that Galatians 5 talks about, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, and self control. Lastly, we love God with all of our minds. Your thoughts make up who you are, your identity, and your feelings. So what you think about matters. Again, without God, our thoughts are corrupt, are selfish, and they're wrong. But the Bible tells us to take every thought captive. It tells us to think of only things that are good and pleasing to God. To think about who God is and why he deserves honor and worship and love for creating us and all that he's done to sustain us. 
We have to be careful what goes in our minds so we can focus on God and the true purpose he has created us for, that is, to love God by knowing who he is. And when we trust Jesus, he daily renews our mind to be able to focus on God. Ultimately, loving God is the most important thing that we will ever do. And the most important way we can love God is to love and trust Jesus with every fiber of our being. To verbally, which means out loud, profess our love for God and our desire for him to be the king of our lives. If we love God that way, by knowing and loving and trusting in Jesus, then we'll be following every law God has for us. And we'll be able to live in community and at peace with him forever, with a renewed heart, with a renewed soul and mind that seeks after God. I hope the scriptures have blessed you today, Calvary. Have a great day. I love you a lot, and I hope you seek to love God more every single day.